Hello students, in this video we're going to look at how to determine the equivalent or total resistance in a circuit. Now resistors or electrical components can be connected in two main ways. They can be connected either in series or in parallel. So these are the two types of connections that can be made. But then how do we distinguish one from the other? Well, in a series connection, what happens is that you have resistors connected one after the other, or components are connected one after the other, while in a parallel connection, these components are connected such that there is a branch. So at one point, you branch to go to one, And then you branch again to go to the other component. And then you branch again to go to the other component, depending on the number of components that you have. And then after that, they come back to meet at a common point, and then they go back to some source. So here in the first one, we have our series connection. So take, for example, if we had received these were resistors, so you can say R1, R2 and R3 in the first part are connected such that they are in series to one another. Let me use a different color for that. So they are in series to one another. This is series. And here now, now we see parallel. So again, here we have R1, R2, and R3 connected in parallel to one another. Now, what happens? What's the difference between series and, um, and parallel? How do we get the effective or equivalent resistance in either case? Well, let's start with series. Now, this time around, let's bring in a power source. So suppose we had two resistors, it can be two, it can have three, doesn't matter, doesn't change anything. So let's say we have three resistors and a power source. So here again, we're saying this is R1, this is R2, and this is R3. So the current comes from our power source. So we have current coming from here, going like this. Let's say this current is I. So as the current comes through this, it passes through the first resistor and then it goes to the second resistor and just like that. Now, what happens is that at each point, there's going to be a potential drop. Energy is going to be used by that resistor. So let's say at V1, at R1, I mean, we have a potential drop, or power is used, energy is used, up to, let's say, V1. And then at point two, at resistor two, we have a voltage drop again, V2. And also at resistor three, we have a voltage drop, V3. Now what happens is that, according to Ohm's law, from Ohm's law, so from Ohm's law, we know to say V is equal to I R. So this is from the source, we can say this is from the source. At resistor R1, we can say the voltage drop V1 will be equal to the current passing through I1, through R1 I mean, multiplying the resistance R1, and at 2, we have the voltage drop V2 will be equal to the voltage drop V2 will be equal to the current passing through R2 multiplying the resistance R2 and across the resistance um, R3, we're going to have a drop as well, V3, and this will be equal to I, I3 current passing through resistance 3, multiplying resistance 3. From here, 
what you should keep in mind is that the voltage that will be lost v1 v2 and v3 the potential drop in our circuit if we were to add it all if we were to add v1 plus v2 plus v3 we get the voltage coming from the source the voltage v in this case the voltage v is the voltage coming from our source here so in other words the voltage that is drawn from the source is just enough such that it, it is used up by those components so if we were to add the losses at each point they add up to the voltage that was coming from the source now with this in mind if we were to substitute the expression at each point we get through from the source we can say we got total current i and the resistance that the source sees is actually the effective resistance i'll take it as the total resistance so the power source only sees it looks at these resistors as if they are a combined thing as if they are a, a sum so it only sees a total resistance not necessarily a sum a, a combination of some sort so the power source only sees these resistors as one unit combined so that is what we're trying to find the equivalent resistance the equivalency of those three resistors rt but we know to say to get this r total multiplying i to get this we have to add for v1 we're going to have current passing through one multiplying r1 plus the current passing through r2 multiplying the resistance r2 plus the current passing through r3 multiplying the resistance r3 okay but what you have to keep in mind is that for a series connection the current that passes through each one of these resistors is the same so in other words what we're saying is that the current passing through r1 i it's the same as the current that passes through here it's the same as the current passing through here so it's the same current throughout in other words in a series connection the current that passes is the same at each point in that loop so if we had a line like this we have a resistor a resistor a resistor can can even add as many resistors as possible so provided this line is continuous doesn't branch at any point the current at any point along our line will be the same so we have the same current here 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 so in a series connection the current passing through our line or at the current at any point is going to be the same with that in mind we conclude that here i1 is the same as i2 is the same as i3 which is the same as the current that came from our source because that's just one line so there was no branching at any point so it's the same as i this implies that our expression now can be written as i rt i r1 plus i r2 plus i r3 if you look closely on the right hand side we have i rt we can factor out what's common here which is i we remain with r1 plus r2 plus r3 so i here comes to cancel with this which leaves the expression for the total resistance or the effective resistance as a sum r1 plus r2 plus r3 so for our case this is how we get the total resistance or the equivalent resistance in a circuit but this is only if our resistors are connected in series so clearly clearly you can tell if you had two resistors it would be r1 plus r2 if you had four resistors to be r1 plus r2 plus r3 plus r4 so it's just a summation so i can even say the total resistance is equals to i can even say this the sum from i is equals to one to ri so this is for where i is the number of resistors present 
Okay, so of course the first formula works. So this is how we get the, the equivalent resistance if our resistors are in series. So we're going to come back to this expression when we start doing examples. But what if the resistors are in parallel? Well, let's have an example. Let's say now we have two resistors. And in this case, our resistors are connected parallel to each other. And we have a power source. Let's say R1, R2, plus, minus, and we have a voltage V. So again, the current coming from the source is I. Now what happens here? Well, when it comes to a parallel connection, the golden rule here is that as the current is coming from the source, it reaches the junction here. At the junction, the current splits up. It sees two routes that are possible. So the current finds two routes. Part of it is going to go following this route. Let's say I1. Part of it is going to take the other route. Let's say I2. But it works such that if you were to add the current that took one route plus the current that took the other route, if you were to add these, you get the total current that was coming from the source. So if we had three branches here, I'd have had I1 plus I2 plus I3, adding up to the total that came from the source. So this is what we get from, um, from what is happening there. So this is the golden rule when it comes to, to a parallel connection. So apart from this, from Ohm's law again, we recall that V is equals to IR. If we made current the subject of the formula, we get current is equal to voltage over resistance. So for the source, from the source, we get voltage over resistance as the expression for current. And then through I1, through R1, I mean, through the first resistor, the current passing through there, I1, using the same expression, this expression that is, we get the current passing through I1, through R1 I mean, will be equal to the voltage through 1 divided by the resistance R1. So this would be for that resistor R1. How about for R2? Again, using this formula, we see that the current passing through R2 will be equal to the voltage that R2 is seeing divided by the resistance R2. So with these in mind, we can then plug them in this formula. What do we see? The current from the source, which is the voltage from the source, divided by the total resistance, the resistance that the, that the source is seeing. Again, RT, just like before, just like for series, RT there from the source, the, this power source is looking at R1 and R2 as a combined thing as a unit, as, as a combined thing. Now, that is what we're trying to find. That is the thing that we're calling the equivalent resistance. So that is what we're trying to find. So in other words, we're trying to find the resistance that the source is seeing, and we're calling it the total resistance. So this is the one that is coming that I'm writing as RT. So apart from that, I1, I1 we saw, it's just the voltage V1 divided by R1 plus and then we have V2 divided by R2 for that second resistance. Now, with that done, one quick observation here. When it comes to parallel connection, what happens here is that the voltage that each resistor sees is the same. This resistor is observing a potential here and here. So this is where you are looking at it from. So in other words, what I'm trying to say here is that the voltage drop across each resistor, if they are in parallel, is going to be the same. So the voltage that each resistor is seeing is the same. So in this case, the voltage that the two resistors are seeing is the same, and it's the voltage from the source. So both resistors see the same voltage. In other words, V1 through R1 and V2 are the same. And these are actually 
the same as the voltage that is coming from the source. Because of this, we end up with V over R total equal to V over R1 plus V over R2. And just like before, we have this R total equal to V. Then we have 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So the voltage cancels out. We end up with 1 over the total resistance equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So this is how we get the equivalent or the total resistance in a, in a parallel connection. So if we had, um, let's say, three resistors could have been 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, we had four just like that again. So in conclusion, if we have, if resistors are in series, then the effective resistance or the total resistance will be given by the sum, let's say R1 plus R2 plus R3, until when you account for all the resistors, if they are in parallel, then you can say 1 over the total resistance or the effective resistance will be equal to 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor plus 1 over the third resistor until when you account for all the resistors which are in parallel. So this is how you get the The equivalent resistor in series and this is how you do it in parallel so parallel and series mm -hmm.